Today, we're doing another round of Facebook Marketplace trading. It's like guitar. Let's do this. So today, we're focusing on what guitars you're starting with when you begin a trade. Let's talk about it. So here we are in Facebook Marketplace. I've just got a generic search the guitar, you know, option up here. Really what I'm going for when I want to start a trade, I want to think about, you know, how far do I have to go to get to where I want? If my guitar goal is 800 bucks, I'm gonna start differently than if my guitar was maybe two or two and a half grand, so to speak. But at the same time, sometimes I like to challenge myself and buy what's ever cheapest on the market and see if I can't just move that up. And I've done that before. I think the lowest I've been is about 150 bucks. And I will tell you, just as some general rules, it is very difficult or it is exponentially longer to trade guitars if the values are inherently a lot lower, obviously. The lower the guitar, the more trades you make. So typically, I like to start off with the $200 to $700 range. That's really oddly specific, and I'll tell you why in a second here. So ideally, I pick two to 700 because I really wanna see what's gonna be worth less than 700 and still give me within my target range, Really, if I can get a guitar in the Korean or Mexican or kind of just the import area, I find that it's a lot easier to trade and get out of Korean imports and into Americans. The, what I found is that the hardest junction points in the guitar trading process are less about value and are more about country of origin. So for example, from Chinese to Mexican, Mexican to American, those are gonna be the hardest junction points of any guitar player. Because there's a lot of, I guess, societal like societal notion that if a guitar is made in Mexico, it's obviously a better guitar than a Chinese-made counterpart. I don't agree with all of that necessarily, but we're thinking about who's buying a guitar. We're not thinking about what you personally think about the current state of import guitars today. So I wanna go through and kinda of find some good import guitars that are maybe good starting points to jump into. First thing that catches my eye, Epiphone ES335 Semi Hollow. So, there are a couple of things that I think really make great starting trades. Of course, any of the big three, which would be Gibson, Fender, or you know PRS, or Martin specifically, but any of their import subsidiaries. So for Fender, you know, it could be Fender Mexico, it could be, you know, for Gibson, it could be Epiphone, and for PRS, you obviously have the SE models. So I'm trying to look in those areas, guitars that are outside of that, ugh, I'm not really keen on, and even things like Gretsch, which was owned by Fender up until yesterday, I wouldn't go with import Gretsches to start. They're not very good guitars, and no one, at least in my market, likes them, so I tend to stay away from them. So, but what I do see here is the Epiphone 335. So, in case you were wondering, the 335 had a couple of iterations in Epiphone's line. They have the traditional Pro, which is what we have here, you can tell by the headstock, and then you had an Inspired by Gibson 335. If I were you, I think these are good guitars, but you really have to pick the Inspired by Gibson line if you really want the best for your buck. However, Triad Pros do really do well if you find the right person. The only issue is, here's where the kicker is, metallic gold color. If the finishes are like exclusive, or they're limited run, or they're marked as limited edition, Typically that means is the manufacturer thought we could probably find some suckers to buy an off color guitar in this model and we can just mark it as some rarity and get people to buy it and then we can get rid of some stock. That's the idea, right? So right away the warning sign, this metallic gold might be pretty to some, but no traditional 335 guy is gonna buy something like this. They're gonna buy a traditional Sunburst, they're gonna buy a Cherry, they're gonna buy things that are gonna be more traditional in terms of, you know, the coloration. There are some exceptions. Some people really love the Blueberry inspired by Gibsons. Some people probably really like this mustard, metallic gold, you know, guitar. But I'm gonna tell you that you're gonna have to just hedge your bets if you're going to invest in a, you know, primary guitar to trade in. Some of these exclusive colors 
don't really work out. So be aware of those things. What I would do with this guy is I would probably buy this for 300. I'd probably say, hey, you know, great looking guitar. I will give you 300 bucks for it and see where he would go with this. So it's obvious based on the copy that, you know, he's obviously moving like to get the guitar off his hands. He's listed all the specs on it. You know, this guy kind of wants to get rid of it, but it's only been two days. So maybe, you know, I wait a week, see where it lands and then reply. You know, it's a bit too early to just say, hey, I'll, you know, give you less than what you asked for. But at the same time, you could just be like, hey, I've got 300 bucks now. I'll meet you in town. And if he says like, no, that's cool too. You can just say, hey, if you change your mind, like get back to me. So those are, those are things you can do to get a guitar like that cheap. The used Schecter Diamond Series C7, no, doesn't meet our, our big three requirement. Also, do never buy a seven string guitar that's an import. In fact, don't buy a seven string in general, unless you're Toast and Abasi or one of those progressive metal people that really just love seven strings. Breedlove, no, don't buy that. Uh, PRS SC245 Friedrich Ackeson signature. Friedrich Ackeson. Not a lot of people know him, but signature guitars tend to sell a little bit better. I don't know how much this guitar is worth. I don't know how many people love Friedrich Atkinson's 245 style guitar, but I will say things like the pots are weird and the you know pickups are not stock. That usually would be a warning sign to me. Be like, no, I'm not going to buy that. But if he has the originals, this is a great way to talk him down and move him down and get a Korean SE right away, if this is indeed a Korean SE. You need to understand where your market's at. Every Epiphone you find may not be the one, right? There may be some Epiphones you just shy away from, this one being case in point, Epiphone Genesis. Do not buy weird one-off Epiphones that look whack. And also, it's not a modern Epiphone. You can see based on the serial number, it's a 2013. I just don't recommend buying guitars that are so out of the blue like this. 2021 Squire Classic Vibe Baritone. If it wasn't baritone, I would probably, you know, go for it. All right, here's a good guitar that you should not get. G5420T Electromatic. Do not buy Gretsch with Bigsby's that are imports. You're welcome, it is a mistake. Do not buy Fender Acoustics. Why would you do that? Especially 12 string, 500 bucks or less acoustics. Never ever do that. We're trying to throw a net out. I don't just want the old man who wants the cleanest Les Paul in the world. I don't just want the punk rock kid who just wants a Schecter. I'm looking for what is the makeup of my market? How can I get a guitar that's going to meet certain market demos across the spectrum? It's like a Venn diagram. I've got like 10 different types of guitar players. I'm trying to find that one common thing for. But speaking of which, things that you might think are winners but are not, anything Ibanez, we don't want. So you see this Ibanez or this Guild or this Schecter or this ESP, no, we don't want that. We just want generic, you know, Gibson guitars. Now here's a Gretsch that might be an exception and I don't know, okay? Only two Gretches sell, in, a, in my opinion, in Nashville. There's Ornstein styled Chet Atkins Gretches, and there's White Falcons, right? Those are the general two in that realm. This might be a good guitar to get if it wasn't 550. They're imports, they're Koreans, they're not good guitars, but the color may be what sells it. So if you wanna take a risk, you may just wanna go for it. What gives me pause though, gotta be very aware, is that it says listed five weeks ago. That tells me that no one wants it, all right? Now don't get me wrong, if someone's hardball on the, I don't wanna trade this thing, you finding someone to trade might be easier if all he wants is cash. But if all he wants is cash and it's been listed for five weeks, that's when you talk the guy down and be like, hey, you're just suck your, your guitar's not selling, it's at a suck fest right now, let me just give you 300 for it and call it a day. So to sum up what I've talked about today with today's trading topic, when you're starting out trading, you really wanna find guitars that are gonna cast a wide net in the market demographic that you're in. I can only speak for my town of Nashville and the greater Nashville area, but generally you notice what gets sold from the mainline manufacturers, Les Pauls, you have Firebirds, you have Stratocasters, Telecasters, Jaguars, you know, the, all these classic examples of guitar manufacturing 
they're the ones being sold. And so it goes to make sense that you want to find one of those guitars that gets sold often to market to, you know, your mainline demos. So that being said, find guitars that are going to sell. Find guitars that are going to be within those companies that are selling guitars the most today, and you'll be just fine to get started. Try to find a Korean guitar that's going to be in that $300 range, $400 range. You'd be surprised who would sell you a Korean styled guitar for $400. Those are good places to start because you ha you get to skip the Chinese game. The Chinese game is just, from a psychological perspective, it's tough to sell out of. It's tough to move from a Chinese guitar to the import to the Americans. So you can start with an import. It makes it a lot easier for you to move into your dream guitar and get your guitar that you've wanted for a long time. Thanks for watching. Guys, if you like this video, please consider subscribing. I make videos all the time. Guys, I've been trading a lot. I know the trading game here in my town. I feel like my advice is really, really, really good. So keep that in mind. Do not get caught buying crappy guitars or guitars that aren't going to sell. Make a really good purchase. Every trade you make has to be able to be traded to the next guy, and you're going to be way better off finding guitars that are marketable, that have value, and often more than not are going to be classic designs. You're not going to want to miss out on a great guitar because you bought something dumb. Have a good day, guys. We'll talk to you next time on Like Guitar.